Hello everyone, welcome back to Luke's Movie Talk, where I go over some of the most recent movies I've been watching. And just to start off, I uploaded a House of Dragons review yesterday, so make sure to give that a look if you're interested. But for this video, I looked at Full Metal Alchemist, The Revenge of Scar on Netflix yesterday. Uh, so the story follows the part of Full Metal Alchemist, with the introduction to Scar and him taking out state alchemists. After Ed and Scar's first fight, he loses his automatic arm and visits his childhood friend, friend Winry to fix it for him. The homunculus envy and gluttony are keeping a watch over Ed and Al so they keep them out of danger. Uh, that's because in the overall story the hidden figure called Father wants them as sacrifices but as far as I'm aware at this point that, that hasn't been revealed to everyone. It's kind of like a kind of secret but the, the brothers know that they're being almost kept aside for safekeeping by the homunculus. Ed and Al meet Ling and Mei for the first time. They are both looking for the secret to immortality which is actually the Philosopher's Stone which are inside the homunculus because they they can sense them the Ling, Ling and his two servants can sense the amount of souls inside of them but they don't know why yet they've got a feeling that it's something to do with them so they're trying to capture them and find out why lots of flashbacks of the Isvalan war set up a lot of the overarching stories for Scar and the backstory for Mustang and a lot of the other alchemists because they end up, ended up getting involved in the Svalon War and it's very much hanging over them as a big part of their lives now and they a lot of them have almost like blackened hearts because of it and it's, it's, it hangs over them. During their next fight, Winry finds out Scar is the one who killed her parents. So we've had flashbacks of the Svalon War and find out that uh, Winry's parents are the ones that stayed behind to look after Ishvalan injured people and they ended up actually saving Scar's life and unfortunately in a rage he killed them and Winry somewhat not forgives him but accepts it and understands that it's happened. Uh, we get some more flashbacks from different perspectives so we get a uh, Hughes, we get a uh, Mustangs look at it and his lieutenant, I can't remember her name exactly, but the lieutenant, uh, Ed calls her. Yeah, we get her flashback as a sniper. We obviously get Scar's flashback with his brother and eventually how he ends up getting his brother's arm, which is what ends up being the reason why he goes into a rage. During the ensuing chase, Ling captures Gluttony. He actually uses uh, his train track, Ed as... Uh, dematerialized and turned it into like metal rods and he <laughs> ties them up into a, a funny looking ball and gluttony's like trapped there and he doesn't know what to do at all during this time Fuhrer bradley is revealed as a homunculus because ling came from he came face to face with him and he knocked his eye patch off and you could see the homunculus sig uh, sigil on his eyeball and ling got away with a flashbang and now, obviously, he's going to tell everyone. Everyone's like, what? The Fuhrer, the leader, the strongest of the whole army is one of the homunculus. Now Mustang has a set frame of mind. Like, okay, now I don't have to feel bad about trying to rise up the ranks and take over because the Fuhrer is literally the bad guy. So he can go up without feeling any remorse now. At some point, Gluttony escapes from his holding and eats Ed, Envy, and Ling, trapping them in some of another dimension. The film ends with Envy, Trent, transform and facing off against Ed and Ling so he ends up going into his true form which is like this big lizard mammal with loads of faces on it and his eyes are like multiple eyes inside the eyes a creepy uh, visual especially because it's in like a dark environment and the reflections are coming off of the water so it's giving the creature a shiny look and it looks really gruesome okay so that's the story so I'm going to talk about some of the things I loved about it the costumes and the look and the cast are absolutely fantastic. They pretty much are direct representations of the manga. Like Ed has the the red coat and the blonde hair and the personality of Ed as well. He's literally, every time someone calls him small, he goes into a, a rage and attacks people. Alphonse, obviously, is the set of armour. Mustang and the blue coat and the white gloves. Like the casting is awesome and all the characters like Ling, they look, what when you think of the characters... They look exactly like you would think in that live action. It's, it's awesome. The sets are really cool at like Winry's Workshop, Train Station, the Hyadale. Like every, every, all of the places look awesome and they look like one for one almost replications of the anime or the manga. The pacing's great. It's like it's not non-stop action, but it's enough to feel like oh, this uh, like two-hour film is like buzzing along quickly and quickly. And because obviously the film has to like condense down multiple chapters or episodes from the anime into this two-hour film. I think it does a really good job in condensing all the important information about Scar and Führer and all the homunculus. It condenses it really well into a sizable amount that makes sense. 
And it also ends with a nice cliffhanger because there's another film, the third installment, which I imagine is going to round up the ending of Full Metal Alchemist for the live action. And it's a nice cliffhanger with Ed and Ling facing off against Envy and I imagine it's going to pick up straight from there and it'll be really cool. Some of the um, negatives I thought were the green screen and CG aren't the best, but they are serviceable. Uh, there's a scene where Hohenheim, Ed and Al's father, is leaving and the green screen the hills in front of him looks absolutely dreadful. And that's one of the worst ones. But a lot of the time when the green screen is like blurry, like when they're on the train at the start, it's not as noticeable because obviously there's a lot of motion blur because they're going past it. So it's not as bad as it is when it's just a still image. So that's why I thought it was more serviceable because a lot of the time the CG was all, all right as well. Like um, Alphonse's armor. It looks good, but it's always saying about the CG in the live action Japanese films that the CG is good. Obviously, they put a lot of money into it, but it's just that at that point where it doesn't look real enough, but looks good. So it's kind of like, okay yeah i think if they put a bit more but maybe budget into it it would reach that peak of like oh yeah this looks amazing but it's at that point with this film where it's like it looks good but it doesn't look at that point yet so it's a bit iffy for, for some scenes especially uh, i think it would definitely get an improvement out using more practical actual locations like maybe the armor they could use practically or maybe some of the um magic like they make stone pillars to stand on Maybe have that as a practical, like almost like a lift going up instead, or the the actual locations as well. Like, a lot of the time, like a one building and then CG city around it. It'd be great if they went to like I don't know a European country where there's a lot of older castles and older cities and recorded on there maybe because the CG is fine, but you can tell it's CG and green screen, which is the bummer because the story's great and it can be distracting sometimes, which is a real bummer. But that's what I thought overall. The overall story is what carries it for me because I love the story, the characters, and for this live action, I think they did a really good job in uh, encapsulating that as a whole with the casting, costumes, and the look of the characters really held it together, even if the CG and the green screen does hold it back a bit. But yeah, that's what I thought of this uh, form of Alchemist live action film on Netflix. If you did like the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to keep up to date with all future But until then, I will see you all next time.